Um, I'm going to be reading from my new book, Burning Season. This is out with blood axe in a matter of days. So I'm very, very excited to be here and share some of the poems with you. Um, my book looks at a family history of involvement in all kinds of extractive industries, including coal and the oil industry. Now, that was my father's uh, occupation and also my grandfather's. Um, when he wasn't out on a, a platform or doing business uh, in all sorts of far-flung places, my father would be you know, constantly zooming off to, to go up hills, and uh, he loved being in the mountains. So this first poem I'll read to you is called The Flower That Breaks Rocks. He introduced his daughters to Ben Nevis. You take the bearing, line up the arrow, pointing to moonlight gun buttress, minus one gun. We didn't care until Dad found us a sax of rage. Its blooms were spokes of the North Star. Saxifrager means rock breaker, Nivalis snow saxifrage. Dainty alpinist, chinking her roots into fissures and fractures like crampons and topaz. But I see now what he could only glimpse. That she and the other alpines, rose roots and pearl warts, are scrambling skywards until all that remains for them is cloud. A lot of my work is quite preoccupied with the oil industry, and something I've become increasingly conscious of is just how dependent a lot of modern life is on it. And I realized with a moment of absolute horror that you know the plastic biros I normally write with are made out of oil. Um, plastic is, is obviously oil derived. Commercial ink is usually petroleum based. So this poem, The Gift, is about the act of writing, but it's also about rather a lot more in terms of where oil comes from. The Gift. I wanted to write, speak, but it wrote, spark. Loaded with cartridges, it rested on the desk. No one dropped it or chewed the tip, but its tactics grew underhand. I tried to write, je suis européenne. It spoke for itself. Je suis iranienne. I unscrewed me from body. Inside a pipeline of what stirred and cretaceous, freighted and volatile. Oceans, continents shifted. The drill bit woke it to burn. Liquid to solid carbon, black then change state back to ink. Indelible blots. My hands smudged. Shirts, doors, tables, each murky finger mark printed a tiny globe. Fuel lines from Persian Gulf to Gulf of Mexico. A newspaper flapped to the doormat, slicked gum's wings. Everything written in fire and oil. I tried to sketch a cottage so the gift drew smoking rubble. A blazing refinery spoke to my line, thank you for this beautiful autumn pen. I found myself writing all these poems about moorland fires and forest fires, and I probably didn't realise fully what I was writing about until I made the connection between my dad's line of work and climate change. Um, this poem, Moorburn, is, is the opening poem in my book, and I, I think it brings quite a few of those issues together. My father weighed a little less than at birth. I carried him in both hands to the pines as October brought the vermin season. When I unscrewed the urn, bone grit and chaff 
streamed out through their gunpowder smoke. I remember the sulfur hiss of the match, how he taught me to breathe in the steeple of logs till the kindling caught and flames were covered. That night, in sleep, I saw the forest clearing by the moor's edge in the wind a scurl of smoke began to rise, bracken and curling, a fume of blabbering leaves. Ants broke their ranks, scattering, fleeing, and a moth spun ahead of the firewind. I took the path over the heath at a run. A voice at my shoulder said, And through the smoke, I saw a line of figures beating and beating the heather as the fire front roared towards them. A volley of shouts, keep the wind at your back. My grandmother threshing with a fire broom, dad hacking a fire break. My stillborn brother now grown, sprinting to the hollow where the spring used to flow, the whole hill flaring in the updraft. And there, a girl running for the riverside. She wore on my face the shade of ash. One of my favorite animals to see when I'm out in the mountains is the ptarmigan. And actually, whenever I've encountered them, I've become quite worried about what's happening to their habitat and to their range. I've seen them both in high summer, basically standing on some really, really heat, sun-beaten rocks, panting and trying to regulate their temperature. And I've seen them in quite dwindling patches of snow, trying to camouflage themselves. Because of course, when there's less snow, there are fewer places for them to hide when they turn white in the winter. Um, this poem remembers a particular encounter in, in the Highland winter. Ptarmigan. Even their eyelids are feathered. The most high arctic of British birds that cry like the clacking of pebbles. Beakless and unclawed, we needed picks, crampons, down jackets and four pine logs crackling from the gate at Crow. In December, a scouring wind on the Devil's Point sent us scurrying to the Rock of Taylors, named for the find caught out in the blizzard. New Year and the burnies and spate, Lady's mantle blooms and gnats swither from between the leaders. But those Ice Age refugees require weather from beyond the north wind, a snow cloak to outfox the eagles. There, they huddle in a melting drift. Step too close, and they burst into flight. A snowstorm beyond the angel's peak. A similarly wintry poem now rhyme about all the birds and beasts that come out in winter that either migrate to the UK or that try to camouflage themselves against the snow. Rhyme. Barbed wire muffled by frost, snow snuffing light of out of season hoops. Grass on the spine of skidder hardens to prunes as if shed by swans wooing the pole star. Snowflakes stickle the gloves. My love picks a heath rush reed stem that is hardened to a quill pen, and on the wind writes to spell my. Spindrift arising from the fell. I fear the extinction of the winter. Snow so in a drift I sketch a snowshoe hair, then snowy owls and snow buntings to call up birds, blizzards in their new leaf. So my last poem is a bit of a, a sequel and it's got all sorts of bits and pieces of different voices that I've pinched and overheard. 
um, and eavesdropped in, in various places. It's set in Cambridge where I lived for three and a half years. I loved it and to be honest I've got absolutely no idea why I didn't go completely mad because it's so flat. For somebody who would much rather be up a hill or, or on the crag than anywhere else, how I coped um, it seems quite strange to me now. But uh, you'll see it's also a climate change poem. Waterland. There is still pike in Jesus' ditch. The length of three finger joints, quicker than dactyls. Gone. Before you can say Jack Pickerel. Drowned land. Drained land, where earth is silt and blood and river. Fenditon stippled with pools, Milton's vocal reeds. City built on water. Don't you know the wash is inching closer? Everything swayed by the wave of water and path and walker. A drift of apples drips from a tree. Hazelnuts flow past on the water's skin. Dutcher lace its channel to its rim. Flash of the flank, surface speaking circles. A bargeman on the far bank plays blues from a different delta. If it keeps on raining, let us go no George Gordon stabled a, me a mare in the meander meadow. They swam naked and unsaddled, watched by yellow irises. Along the bank, he walked a bear. His pool is jammed by a concrete weir. When the levee breaks, mama, you gotta move. Walcott de Romamira. Cassie, read my scope of horror. I'm better with cards. You irrational hippies. Have you heard of probability theory? Shh! She's trying to concentrate. You've drawn the moon. Watch for undertoes and tide rips. The lake's skin run. The junction by the parade's already underwater. Names become watercolour. Swabesy, Fenstanton, Water Beach. Past fly tips, brambles and fields cropped by shearlings, I swam and spring fish runs through weed clotted water. The arches spread echoes. The current led to water lilies. A damselfly nymph shed its skin on mine and dried its wings, but autumn found a drowned man floating in a white swan. If I ever reach the head of the river, I'll raise a glass to my father's ghost out there on freezing Isis, his crew plying eight blades. Pull! Like you're pulling a town of your granny! What it takes to make a mountain man leave his home. Water Crowfoot City, willow roots in your cellars, city of Daphnia, winter coughs and viles disease. Slow City, Jade Vine City, your fellowship of swans and muntjac. We stopped, dead at a giant bronze hare. It stood in the garden of a dissolute peer. My man said he wished he'd trespassed over the boundary fence and pissed. Ely's belfry sails on wet the mist. Eel isle, culverts of fish poachers and fike nets. My friend Eli trapped an eel and kept her till she sobered. She was thirsty for salt slipped her tank and slithered back to the sea road river. Each eel an L of Atlantic. Going down, going down. 
Winter nights when the granter can't rest in its bed, casts its coverlet over the meadows, floats over the orgasm of the ridge as mist sleepwalks in the courts. The old stream were hushed me when the horizon seemed to capsize. When the levee breaks, mama, you gotta move. Streets of dumpster foxes and essay crises from Cam Causeway to Mariner's Way. Town of smashed bottles, chucked bike, tires cluttering, boom, brook. The North Sea remembers its channels and you, city of rivers, will need to regulate. The skeleton whale in the zoology museum back in its element. Darwin's fossil ceilings stretching the stone tendrils. Carved griffins sprout gills and algae. The fellows of Bradbury College sit at high table in an underwater dome. A library sails between clock towers mooring where it's needed. Old waterway, bless me, outwash, reed roots, ground glass. Sets me adrift, surrounded by grave goods, a hair clip, china cups, leaves of a tea bush for these warmer northern latitudes. When your willowed meanders roll under the seabed, a woman will pan the dredges silt from lithics and bone splinters. The sediment will birth cracked tankards, bottle caps, a shucked off ring now tarnished the broken urn of my pearls. My fragments will lie in vitrine with coin pools, scabbard shapes, the last feminine bitter. May rang, told me she was carrying a girl. She kicks and pivots in her waterbed, passenger voyaging towards the light. Tell me some strong female names. When the levee breaks, mama, you gotta move. My sister's children's children will weigh anchor, sleep over the waves, hunt under them, raise fish, graze kelp. Their voices will never be gills. They'll listen for whales in the shell of the eel. Karina in the sea sky, pray for us. Capricorn of slow lights, lead us. Vela, grant us a following wind. Cetus of the depths, uplift us. City setting sail, barge and tarpaulin, town going down the meadows, sea grass when the levee breaks, octopus in the undercroft, barnacles in skylights going down during storms, the bells of keys and queens still ring beneath the water. When the levee breaks, your children plotting courses for all points of the compass. Thank you.